Good afternoon, Ruby Lane. This is Michael Canadas with the Grovey and Doll Museum. Uh, welcome. We're very happy to have you here today. We have a very special program planned for you. Um, today we're going to have a visit with Mimi. But with Mimi, we also have a fabulous guest speaker. Those of you who do not know her, she's an international uh, teacher of doll making. She's a costume historian. She's taught all over the world uh, how to make dolls and how to co costume dolls. We are just coming off of a workshop that we had here this weekend at the Grovian Doll Museum. And she taught 22 um, students and they created a brew, a costume for a brew jeune for our doll, doll inspired by our doll Grovian uh, Bebe Charity. And she was very generous to stay a little longer to help give uh, a, a, a talk for and about Mimi. So welcome, Cheryl Williams. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. And hello, Ruby Lane out there. Nice to be back and doing this again with Michael. Well, here we are. So I think we should first take a look at Mimi. But I also want to point out a significant gift that the Grovian was given by um, one of our followers uh, in the United Kingdom. And she was so, I believe, touched by one of the programs that she sent us this handkerchief. And it's an amazing piece of history. And it's a handkerchief that belonged to Empress Eugenie. And in Mimi's trousseau, she's always had this little portrait of Empress Eugenie. So this was a really wonderful find. And the girl that played with Mimi 160 years ago actually was a member of the Spencer family. And most people know of the Spencer family because their most famous um, member of that was Princess Diana. So Mimi came from a very special place. Um, I should also point out, this is Mimi, and she is a first generation Hire. So she is the number one Hire, the first that they produced. And she has a china glazed head, and she has a gutta percha body, the original gutta percha body. Um, you know, we assume that everybody knows what gutta percha is, but not everybody does. So we have a little, a little sick gutta percha body, but it works great that we can show you what it is. So if you look inside the body, it is a, a dark color and that it was basically like a rubber material. So this body, when it was new, was soft. So this is the type of body that Mimi has. They were very durable in their time, but as they aged, they dried and became very hard. It's not that they're, the hardness was the problem. The problem is, if you look at her hands though, or arms, the, that's solid gutta percha. It's not hollow. So they're very heavy. And then if you look at the areas here that support the arms, they're not that heavy. Mm -hmm. So you have gravity. Um, by the way, don't feel sorry for the doll that has this uh, body. It's completely repairable by somebody who knows what oh, they're doing. Because okay. it, it's a natural material. So that's what gutta percha is. And then talk about the and, label. And the, this is a label. This is a little bit later than a Mimi. Mimi has the first label, which has the profile of Empress Eugenie's husband on it. So this is a little bit later. Um, um, this is 1860, an 1867 label. So they did change their labels as time went by. Okay. Um, so you'll see that. But what you do want to look for, also back to the label, is this. This is actually really green, but as time goes by, it kind of turns a blue, blue. color. But it was really originally mm -hmm. a bright green. Now, should we talk about the, the quality of this handkerchief? That's right. If you look at the fabric and look how sheer it 
sheer it is, and also look at the embroidery, especially the polka dots, where if you look on this side and you look on this side. There's almost no difference. No, it's beautifully, beautifully done. You could also see the rolled hems here where it's joined and beautiful, beautiful work with teeny tiny hand stitches. I and this, that. this would have been, I mean, we do know that this was a gift to someone and a handkerchief was a very personal thing to give to someone. And, uh, you know, the Empress did not ever have a lover or a boyfriend or uh, anything like that. So it wasn't like she was a lady that dropped her handkerchief for some man to pick it up. So this was really something that she would have given to someone that she really, really um, cared about. And yes. uh, we're, we're, we're lucky to have that. So let's talk about dresses. Yes. Let's Which one do you want to talk about first? Because wow. it's you're the guest. Well, we probably should talk about the one she's wearing to begin with, and then we can go on to the multiple other ones. She I mean, has. I love the dress she's wearing, and it has that very interesting sutash trim. It does. But it the th does. the thing that I love is, and the thing that's not as rare as the dress is it's this the little shoulders. thing. Yes. So. I mean, don't you believe that's a lost art? Oh, absolutely. When I first looked at this from a distance, I thought, oh, it's just a crocheted shawl. But then when you look close, all of these are little pom-poms. And then I thought, how did they get this on this background? So if we turn this over, you can see the netting, the netting design that they have done. But each of those pom-poms, this thread goes through. And I don't know if we can catch that on the camera or not, but there is a stitch from that background that goes through each pom-pom. So it wasn't put on the pom-pom it put on afterwards. It was part of the process. Is, was of, it of almost like a uh, macrame or is it um, weaving? It's, I'm not sure, Michael. I, I don't know. I have never, never attempted I mean, to I do think, this I again. think it is really totally a lost art. Right? It is. It and is. it's so precise. The yes. only, t only irregularities are uh, where there's been repairs, repairs over, the, over the period yes. of time. But it is truly a treasure. It's sensational piece. It is. It I mean, I think is. this is a wonderful um, um, costume, but I think but it's the that's accessory. That's makes is, it. <laughs> That and also, 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 we should tell the audience that statistically at this period, so we're at about 1860, um, the dolls start really started to be made about 1855, but we're at 1860. At this time, although they don't look like it, almost all of these skirts will measure out to be 40 inches. Mm -hmm. Right. They don't necessarily look like it, but this really shows because you've got all the flounces. Right. Yes, and that adds all the volume to that skirt. Yes, it yes. does. So one of my favorites, and I kind of think, I don't want to say, you know, the finest in the world, but I think that this is probably some of the finest workmanship on a Hure dress that yes. I've ever seen. Yes, this is all hand, hand embroidery here. I and mean, that had see. to just be... Oh, that's got to be tedious for miles of ruffle. Yeah, 40, here. 40, 40, 40. Well, more than that, because yeah, these scattered. are ruffled. Yes. yes, these are gathered on as well. So again, really sheer, beautiful, and it, and it feels like organdy because it's got a lot of body to the fabric. And that makes all these ruffles Well, I think out this, this costume has its original sizing in it still because this is actually a marked costume, so, okay. which means right. that it's, it's never been laundered since, right. since the, the, the time frame. And but the, it, the other interesting thing about this is you can see this 40 inches is all cartridge pleated up here at the waistline, and that's giving us a lot of volume taken down to a small waist. And that's um, without makes a it beautiful. without a clumsy bulk. No, piece. oh no. And here. here, here's kind of one of their secrets. I shouldn't tell you all the secrets, but oh. here's the secret of how they yes. folded it over. Right. This is the fold over before they started the cartridge pleating, and then my guess is if we go up here, there is going to be a band. There's a band. up in mm -hmm. here, right in here that all and, that and, screws And those that are to. looking for the mark. 
you can pull that, it's right there. There, can you see it? And the, the blue. Or green. Right, green. Yeah, green, right there. It's, it was it's started out green and it kind okay. of changes as time goes by. So that's the mark. But the other wonderful thing as a seamstress about this is this technique in the front of doing the cording, corded gathering. So you have this fine, fine cord with that is sheared as applied in a big piece like this and then sheared up to do this beautiful inset piece in the front. And then you also have this tiny, tiny cording that's coming up and accenting the sleeves. And uh, the viewers should know that this weekend Cheryl taught a class and they did, did cording. Cording, cording, and they cording. Did it, they did it by hand. They did, and yes. And it worked out beautifully. It did. It was Everyone did perfectly a miniature, job. Yes. miniature cording. Right. But this is so tiny. And that's what gives this whole dress this very delicate, light feeling to it. Yeah. And, and, and also for the, to the audience to know, they didn't recreate a pattern every two minutes because we can go from there to here, and we basically have the very same yes. model of a dress. And but this it's, is my favorite. <laughs> I'm in love with the fabric I, I, and the I colors. Do too. <laughs> and I, I, I have been I have been remiss on this. The the arrangement of these flowers, the colors of this does have some nationalistic meaning mm, okay like you know in california we have california poppies right this has some um nationalistic meaning i have i have to spend some time um finding out about that but here you can see that they've taken the basic same pattern mm -hmm. and just worked it in a different way with a different fabric with but it's identical here here even the retails going over here your little ruffled sleeves that's all the same. And the wonderful thing about Mimi being a early um, here with the gutta perch body, there's no jointing in her arms. So uh, yes. well, later on they did have mm -hmm. jointing. She has no elbow joint so, uh, uh, movement, but she looks beautiful in, in this, the costume because there's no break. Because this is coming smooth yeah. as it comes yeah. out. And also to the movement, they were kind of smart about that. One thing all people that collect French fashion dolls know is that Sometimes you can't get them into clothes, where she has a nice yes. movement to get in and out yes. of things. Yes. And then per perhaps maybe we should look at the Bluebird of Happiness dress, yes. because that is one of the suppliers for the Hure company was a lady by, by the name of um, Mademoiselle Barreau. And one of her um, insignias was a bird, a little finch-like blue bird. And if you notice that this print is a little blue bird print, I've seen two variations of this print. And then I, we do have a document, uh, a, a piece of fabric that was from a here a bed that had the same print, but in pinks and reds. Mm. So this was a very popular print. Mm -hmm. But here again, you've got the basically the same top. Yes, right, except without the shearing across here. Except this one is interesting in that they've taken the detail right down here. And if you flip this back, you can see it's a separate piece and it's backed in the blue. That is really... So this, we, do this we is, think this whole front piece is a separate it's piece? A, I think so, right here. Yeah. And then that was put into the back, and then done, your cartridge pleating was finished. And that. I have not seen this, the skirt part done like this before. No, I haven't yeah. either. I think this is really, really, really interesting. Yeah. And again, it's just very simple because we're at the period in the 1860s where actually clothes were very simple. There wasn't a lot of embellishment. Lot of embellishment. They weren't overlaced. No. Um, no. Um, you know, yes, you did have some fancy things, but most things were very simple. Yes. And the one other thing about this, I think the design of the sleeve on this is absolutely charming. It opens the end where you would think it might be in the back is here. So when her arm comes out, she can move. It's, it's, she moves, and this is nice and. Um, very flattering to the arm, the way this is, this is done. And again, backed 
in the blue. Actually, this is blue tape. This is a blue tape. And then we can see that here a close they used hand sewing and machine sewing. And this is very, very early machine sewing because I don't believe that any, we have antique machines here, but none of them can do stitches that small. That, small. that would have been like the earliest machine um, yeah. that was around. Today, if we used, made stitches that small with the machine, it would actually just cut the fabric. It would, it would. but the other, the other reason they were able to do that is because the thread is so fine. Exactly. So fine that the stitches are individual and very, you can see, I'm, I hope you're seeing this by camera. Um, see how small the stitches are. And just for the audience to know, almost everything that Lucy has, almost every garment is marked. Mimi. Or Mimi, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, not Lucy. Not it's Lucy. Mimi. We're not talking about Lucy today. Mimi. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Mimi. Yes. <laughs> but you know, Mimi and Lucy, they're sisters. And that, but that doesn't mean that they share anything. So they do not share anything. Um, one thing that we have that's for her that's really wonderful. Um, you know, France is a Catholic country, and you have things called carnival, where you have after your religious, or before you go into, you know, being pious, you have your outrageousness. <laughs> yes. So she has her little. Mademoiselle Chloe Chanel costume, and it has a little hat, but I, I, don't, I couldn't locate it this morning, but, okay. it, but she does have a little hat, little jester type of hat, and this is a wonderful thing. Again, when you buy things like this or you collect it, sometimes you do have to be your own investigator. So if you didn't know, because we put a pin in this, if you didn't know, there's just a very faint mark you're right mark okay. right there but let me remove the pin and you can see it just disappears so you do have to sometimes really look at your pieces and do um, um, some investigation and um, you know this is kind of a little bit sloppy work for them but not all no. not all the pieces are are fine are fine fine, fine fine no. yes no but i think bring the would you oh, bring sure. the skirt back again sure <laughs> of course to talk about the how they had designed this with the pink stripe coming down the front that duplicates right at the skirt here and if we turn it to the back you have the same thing where you have your jacket and running into the same piece and then on the sides you're in solid and the, with the beautiful van dyking and silver metallic trim around the Van Dyke and around the skirt as well. Yeah, it's just um, darling. It is. It is so cute. Yes. And it, it's kind of unexpected in, uh, yes. in uh, that, that you would have that. And maybe we should also talk about a little bit utilitarian because it's not necessarily the most exciting. But, you know, these dolls had lives. Yes. The little Spencer girl that had this doll took her out in the winter, mm -hmm. dressed her, undressed her. So she did have to have yeah, a winter yeah. coat. A winter coat. And, and this this is a this is something that you see in almost every Hire trousseau and it oh usually gosh. comes in this kind of cocoa brown or a black mm -hmm. gr with a gray um, under under undertone to undertone it. to it. Yes, this actually almost looks striped in some light where the gray comes down here. But I also want you to see that it is not lined. It is completely finished inside and very tightly overcast here. But there's no lining in this. No, and I've coat. never seen one when of these was coats lined? that was lined. Okay. And I think that they're, they're kind of overlooked because it's not a glamorous piece. Right. But it is something to, that, that, that you really need to have. Um, as part to make a, a trousseau complete. Mm -hmm. And she also has this, which is darling, a provincial costume. provincial costume. So we are assuming that the family at one point went to Europe and they um, obviously bought her in Europe, but they also bought her a provincial, provincial. costume. And this is again also marked here, 
And different garments are marked in different places. This happens to be in the inside, marked right across the chest. Oh. And that's where sometimes you would find it. And then so she's got her crazy uh, bonnet, but it yes. has to do with the region. Right. And I think in the, the program about Lucy, we're not talking about Lucy now, we talked about rickrack, handmade mm -hmm. rickrack. We did. And yes. is this not handmade? That is handmade. So rickrack. that's what handmade rickrack looks, looks like. like. And look at what they did with it. It's yes. just unbelievable, really. Yes, it, a, it comes out to be a very effective lace. Yes, and, and actually it's almost, you could call it more lace than, yes, it does. than rickrack. Yes. But then she has her wooden yes. shoes, and of course, not all wooden shoes are Dutch. You know, the French also wore and here's wooden, the wooden shoes. The wooden soles and very pointed and with the squared off piece here. So that's, that's her And they really are darling. They they're are really, so they're cute, cute on. And actually, right. I'll just show you, because I think I could, without disturbing her, I think I could get her hat on her. You can see how fun it is. Yeah. Like, my hat's bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really kind of cute. Um, let's look at a party dress mm. because she does have three party dresses. And I think this one, didn't you um, do a project for the... No, well, Louise Hedrick did a project with this dress. Oh, she did. Okay. Yes. But so, this, is, this is a fantastic... So, would you say silk file? I'd say silk, very, very fine silk file. Yeah. And then again, simply designed, simply accessorized with just this pleating band with the, the lovely lace and then a little bit of cord sitting over the raw edge, I'm sure here. And on the side, you have the beginning of the panel that's pleated here and the little bows coming down here. So... And then, of course, the pleating is going back over the shoulder. And it's and very interesting how they they attach the front half. But, but left the back open. Up yes. Left the back mm -hmm. open. Yes. So uh, that was probably for ease of dressing. Yes. And I always like to, we can tilt it up so that you can see the inside. They've got a nice horsehair band holding out the bottom of the skirt, giving it a little body here. And very simple you can see the nice large stitches they've used to apply this lace it's not necessary to do little ones um, the large work just and you know you'll see a different a different technique sewing techniques because let's be really real about it the Hire sisters did not sit in their shop making dresses right. they had a whole crew of piecemeal workers right. and probably within the piecemeal workers they piecemealed things out. Right. So that's why you see... Their, under their direction, undoubtedly, right. for style sure. and color. And, and probably kind of fabrics. Thing. Yes. And we know that, um, I mean, this has been going around, the, the famous Jenny dolls from the 1950s, those dolls were dressed piecework. Mm. So, you know, you went and picked up your fabric and you went home and took care of your kids and then and sewed and, and made, sewed when you could. made a little extra money. Mm -hmm. This piece, I think, is one of my favorites. Party dress. Yes. Yes. And this one is is a I don't know pre maybe pre pleated so that it it already has. Oh, I think a, this is a pleating machine. Yes, that has made that made all of this. But again, layers a layer here we can see attached to the lining of the dress here, and then a layer that's covering that, and then this and the lining. Our cartridge pleated to the band. So, and the Van Dyking, which of course is done by a, machine, a crank machine. Crank machine. Um, very effective trim. Again, all monotone color, and um, but but it's the detail of that Van Dyking and the and the cartridge pleat. I mean the the pleating machine and the little gathered trim here is what makes that spectacular. And look at the little bit of. But then. Here. Eat your heart out. Then she has a little hair ornament yes. to go with that. Oh. And then she has oh wow. A gorgeous 
parasol. So look at that oh, all together. So yummy. And a parasol like this, this is not, we're having a little bit of a drizzly rainy day. This is not for a rainy day. This is for a walk in the park on a sunny day. It's really a shade, yes, really, than, to keep more this, than anything. The... And you can see this little Spencer Park that she could walk through and just be, you know, just beautiful in this. Yes. And again, this, again, this is not any fancy um, parasol. It's just how they trimmed the it. The trim and the color, and the yes, color combination. Yes. How they trimmed Very it. Very effective. Yes. So let's look at another one that I think is really remarkable. And that's this piece that... Do you know, now when we want fabric, we just go and find fabric. It's very easy to find. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily valued anywhere what it was 150 years ago. But this is Leon silk. And yes. this had to be a very expensive yeah. dress yes. in its time. Yes, with the woven striping and then the, the floral over. It's very over reminiscent this. of the 18th century. Yeah. And then velvet on the bottom, just simply attached to the bottom of the dress and velvet around the waist and accenting the cut up here. And if you look at the square, the square cut up here where it comes straight and there's this little piece across the shoulders and then sleeve set into that. So, And when you really collect hirays, you could almost look at a piece like this and you really don't even have to measure it. You know that it will fit because there are certain, this, this measurement it's it, consistent. It's, it's consistent. consistent. So these, the this part. really is the first, quote, fashion doll. So she's the great, 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 great grandmother Barbie and all other dolls right. that had wardrobes. The other thing that's different on this dress is instead of cartridge pleating, it's box pleated. So that you've got a box here and if you've got two boxes in the front and we come over on the side, we've got the box and then the inverted to give it more fullness. We needed to keep it a little flatter in the front. You come around the side and you're wanting more fullness, so you add the extra pleating. And that's the same thing we did this weekend. Yes, with, oh, absolutely. Right, and this, this technique too is, is um, was used on Rose Percy's clothes, mm -hmm. which are in the same right, the era same as, as yeah. this. But if you hold that, then I'll accessorize this costume. Because Shire dolls also had things that mixed and matched. So she could wear that dress with this hat and then use this mantle and yes. have a phenomenal outfit. Yes. Doesn't that so, add so much when you put that over it? And this is Chantilly lace, which yes. lace was very um, prized at that time. Yes. You know, you women had uh, part of their financial security was tied up in lace, lace. you yes. know so it would have been very very special and then yes. look at how it works in the back yes with the, the really bow. fine velvet coming down here to add a really beautiful point to the back and then by the way i have um now this is not quite well this is blonde lace um we just had a, our, our club had a lecture by um, the, someone from the Lace Museum, and they pointed out to us that blonde lace that everybody's crazy about, which is basically Chantilly lace, it's just not black. Uh -huh. To call, be able to call it Chantilly oh, lace, it has, has to, to be black. black lace. So if it's the same concept and it's cream or white, it's blonde. blonde. Mm -hmm. But while we're there, you know, in dolls' lives, they have things like mourning too. And this, I think, is a really rare piece. It doesn't show up really well on camera, but this is Mimi's mourning costume. Yes. So those other accessories would go with this, and it's actually beautifully constructed. It is. Again, with the, with the cartridge pleating here, one ruffle. Two, no, two ruffles when we get underneath here, but not very fluted. They are very flat on this, so it's not a puffy, 
ex exuberant dress because it's a morning dress. Yeah, it's it's subdued. Yes. But I mean, the, the workmanship in it is just that amazing. Is fabulous. Now, the other thing where you have this up here, I want sure. to point out, is if you look at the length of the dress as we go from front to back, you will notice there is a slight drop in these skirts. And that is very typical Hure. Absolutely. So that you cut the back about a half inch to three quarters longer. Um, and then you get this little bit of a drop. Yes. And, so. and you need that with the. Uh, with um, when you're using your crinolines. Yes. And since we were in black, we should show this magnificent oh, coat. Yes. With the little, and this is exactly what we I taught the girls this weekend, except our cording was a little bit bigger on the brook. Ours was a little bit bigger. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a cording that is made in bias and then applied to the front and then pulled over the back and it finishes the fabric, the, the seam, the right edge of the black. So it's a, a one step way to do this and keep the bulk down so that this lays very beautifully and it accents every sleeve. And look at this. This is just absolutely gorgeous. And they've used the seam, the, the pattern pieces to actually make the design. Yes. So rather than putting, you know, um, embellishments on it they've just used the they've cut just, to to make right it. to cord it and and do the visuals so that's stunning with the with the black and then the cream lines of everything here and this it's is really beautiful. something that could be done today oh absolutely if somebody wanted to put sure. the time in it. but i also think what's ge pure genius are the pagoda sleeves. yes yes and then again using the the, the seam they've got, yeah and they've got this sheared so that that even accents the pagoda even more so it's pulled up here and that accents the length of the and outside. And it reminds me that I should show the audience something and you know you find in dolls some very rare things and you might think that the, these are garters for the legs but they're not. They're, this is, she only has one so she's lost one some Somewhere. This is a sleeve garter. So this would be used at your upper arm to hold your false sleeves. Mm -hmm. So with this, she could have worn a blouse or a false, false sleeve. sleeve. Yes. Should we show the audience one of the finest pieces of sutash work in the world? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Let's, let's, go, <laughs> let's, let's go there. So we're going to move over to... We had to make an annex table for Mimi because she's, she, has so many she has so many things. But this is a little pinafore. pinafore. And when I first, when Michael first showed this to me, I said, oh, that is just embroidery. And then I took it over to the light with my strong glasses and I said, that is the tiniest soutache I've ever seen. And the reason I know it is, is because if you look on the back, these are long stitches here where you, the soutache was being attached to the dress. And if it were embroidery, it wouldn't look like that no. on the back at all. But the, uh, the thing about it is their inner work is, the, I mean, this could almost be a be design. Yes. 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 Yeah. And this yeah. is a pinafore for play. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. That's and I would, you know, this couldn't be. This couldn't be made today for a profit because no one <laughs> no would, would pay no. what it would. And who could find the soutache yes. to do it? Yes. So. But you can see the little little uh, the fleur de lis there. Yeah, the little royal co connection there. You and, can play uh, and be royal. Yes. And again, the, the handmade rickrack across the top of the pockets. But this would protect your better dresses so that you could be around the house and not worry when you're playing Absolutely. to, to really and, and they and you know children were doing projects yes um this is another one of her simple dresses but yet it's just i mean the the, the choices that they made yes. were so and look at elegant this, look at this cotton with the diagonal weave in it with so that it's not cut on the bias that's a diagonal weave in the fabric and again, the same design as we started out with here, except it's not sheared. They have just done some white work uh, trim on top of it, but cording, cording, and little, cording. And just a little tiny rickrack. Yeah. Teeny. Yeah. 
And then the so, beautiful little beautiful little cap sleeves. sleeves. Yes. And cartridge pleating on a band, the way it's properly supposed to be done. Maybe we can look inside here and see. Now you can see the cartridge pleating. This is the turnover of it. And then it's applied, whipped on this band across here. And I believe oh. that they left these pieces which they could have removed i believe they left them because it helps give the, the this, a shape. little a little bit of shape but it also if you had cut them all the way off it would have lost the stability and they wouldn't ever have been finished because it would have had too much bulk yes no i mean they did know what they were doing yes. then. and it, she is a girl and she does um, mimi does have half slips but this is her full slip because she is a girl. So yes. girls would have a full slip. And this and is a classic one. Financially, I think that they chose to to put the their money into the full slip because mm -hmm. the half slips are very simple. Mm -hmm. This is not. No, no, this is I mean look at the work. Tiny, workmanship tiny on pin tucks that. and the beautiful embroidery and some hem stitching, a little um Another embroidery down here, and then the fine, the fine ruffle. But this is the classic Hure full slip. And you would need this to um, a, a lot of Hures, and she has dresses that are very sheer. Mm -hmm. So she would need a very good undergarment. This is an example of a sheer, really sheer, sh really sheer. But I mean, this is the quality that could have gone to the Empress of France. Right. Because oh, when you yeah. see this work on this Let's little see. simple dress, Day it's, dress. it's unbelievable. It is. And, it is. and she ha really has to have that under underneath. underneath in order, to, because she'd be basically walking out naked. Right, yeah. right, yes. <laughs> and if you pull up the collar here, you just see the construction here where you've got the little tiny rolled hems up in here joining that. And you also have a shearing here that comes down to a point. So it accents her waistline as it comes down and makes a lovely, lovely dress. The other thing that I want to go back to this petticoat for, Michael, is this is a perfect example of shorter in the front than the back. Because as this is laying out flat, You'll see the, the length of the, the patty coat really here. I mean, it's very, very obvious here. So that it would match what was going over it. And then here's one of her, she has a few blouses, which would go with a lot of different outfits. And again, or a combing jacket. Or, yeah, or, yeah, that could be a combing jacket. It's probably, you yes, know what, with you're that. right. It is a, it's combing, a combing jacket. jacket. Yes, it is. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And then here we have more, I'm sorry, I did not press no. this, but again, we have more rickrack. Yes. And this, I think, is kind of around the house dress. Mm -hmm. It's not, yeah. Um, yeah. but you know, Hure's had nap time and night, night time. And Mimi has lots of nightwear. Night yes. Night, lots of nightgowns. Well, whatever the little girl had in her own wardrobe, she would want her doll to Ex have. Exactly. And so. then look at all the cut work at the, mm, at the top, mm -hmm. just beautifully. And yeah. this was a, a this very is a substantial, <laughs> substantial. This was meant to last. The, yes, to, to For the, through washing. Yes, so. yes. And we talked a lot about Hure marks, and um, you know, furs were at that period a necessity because you know they didn't have heating the way we do today and automobiles and trains and homes. And this was her first set, which is rabbit that's meant to uh, simulate um, ermine. ermine. And she actually has two sets of furs. Of furs. Yes. And here's the little ermine tail detail up here that is so cute. That that's Those adorable may be ermine her. tails, do you think? These are ermine tails for sure. Yes. I really think the whole thing is ermine. Do you? I do. Oh, do you? I think it's absolutely. Oh, okay. Because it's so fine in the way it that's lays true. so yeah. flat. I guess it's, and it's and rabbit's fluffy. much fluffer. Fluffier. Yeah. So, and we frequently see ermine used at this period. So, well, and if it is ermine, it, it, that would be the most expensive fur at the time because right. they didn't have the, the means to uh, color furs. 
Right. So that would be the fur. That yeah. would be the lightest. And also, this is this is emulating the royal. That's true. She's a Spencer. <laughs> She's a royal. So <laughs> She's the a king would have had some of this. Yes. And did you talk about the beautiful mark? And, and the there's top the, of the mark. Box. So oh. you know, if you if we can flip the 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 box over, you can see the greens. Yes. The green and someone edge. at some point put a the, little. Uh, uh, embellished it, right. it probably her right. uh, owner of the child right but this was a bright v vivid green mm. originally the mark was green too mm -hmm. it's just as exposure as it made it look the, a little more blue is, but it's yeah. really it really was green and um this chemise is yeah. beyond i mean i know everybody <laughs> wants to look at pretty dresses but but this is <laughs> I mean, I'd be Amazing. happy to just have a doll dressed just in like this. this. I mean, number one, of course, you're back to the fabulous, thin, fine fabric. But when you get up here and you see the embroidery work and the fine pin tucks, it is just amazing. And little tatted, tatted laces around here. And look at the design, the way they have taken this, pulled this in, and then the little bit of a sleeve so that it doesn't interfere with the dresses underneath. No. But it is magnificent. And, Let me show and the back. A chemise, by the way, would have been not worn straight down to the knees. This would have been tucked in into the pants. Yeah. So yeah. it would have been, um, so they didn't put the, the, uh, the trim, trim here. on the, no, there. No, yes. that would have been plain. But I think a this could have, this, do you think that this could have lace been Pulled up. Sometimes so. you see that. You see the top of the chemise, especially when it has a beautiful lace like this, just tucked out and showing. Yes, I, right I think, I think it probably did have that. Yeah. And, um, oh, I know what we have to show here this hoop. Oh, yes. This is so interesting. If we look inside, we can see that the hoop is, the boning is only on the bottom row. So it is, again, car cartridge pleated, left flat in the front, because we don't want poofy stomachs. No, so, we don't. <laughs> no, we, we'd like to all get rid of that. <laughs> I, need to get a, I need to get a hoop Oof, skirt. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got one tuck here, um, but this is just uh, probably whale bone down in here. Um, but again, look at the shape. It is not even... So this trains out the back a little bit. Well, and, and this is a essential piece yes. to go in a, because you can't get the shape without, without this. this. Without I mean, we can struggle along with um, tissue paper, but right. it doesn't make, <laughs> doesn't it's do not the quite same the same thing. thing. And that allows then for the little bit longer skirt in the back so that when it's on, you're really even when it's, appears when you're walking, even though that skirt's longer in the back. And this the wouldn't time. have, I mean, this would have a beautiful movement. Yes, it would. And I by think the time so all too. of the uh, uh, undergarments are in it yes. and yes. Uh, on it. Okay. So, Cheryl, if you were going to pick one item here that would be your favorite, that you'd want to sometime teach a class here on a particular piece, which one would it be? Well... That's a hard decision. That's a very hard decision. But I absolutely love this dress. I do too. <laughs> this is my favorite. I think I think the color, the design, and the fabric is just so yummy. It is. And the border, using the border print on the ruffles and the bretelles and the bottom of the sleeves, according across here, it's got the coordinating basic fabric underneath with the floral. This is my favorite. I, I, I agree with you. <laughs> Good. I mean, I have, I have a few favorites. I know. I see, that was but that, hard But what I, what I love about this is to, particularly when you're teaching a class, which you don't think about, oh, a dress only needs, you know, six yards of material. Well, but then you times that 22. This uh, is nice so because you have just, just the fabric. Right. And your, right. and your God-given talent. Yes. It's so, just, and a good instructor. And a good instructor, <laughs> which we are blessed to have. And um, I want to thank everybody who's tuned in. And we'll be back uh, at some point. 
And and thank you again, Cheryl, oh, for coming thank you for having and staying me. on. I know you you know took time out of your life, but we really appreciate <laughs> it's lots of fun. it. So okay. bye bye, bye, -bye. Ruby Lane.